Well, here we are. The end of the most insane, nonsensical season of Riverdale yet. And that includes Edgar Evan Ever and his magic rocket ship, okay? Everyone has superpowers now. Percival Pickens is a mind-controlling, time-traveling sorcerer. The show is just beyond description at this point. Years from now, some YouTuber's gonna make a four-hour deep dive called Riverdale Was Actually Genius, by the way, and they will be so wrong. Anyway, so let's wrap up season six and see how everything pans out. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by War Thunder. War Thunder is a free-to-play multiplayer action game available on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and Mac. It's a game where you get to use all different types of real-life, renowned, and prototype military, ground, sea, and air vehicles from countries all over the world, from the 1930s all the way up to the modern day. One of the things this game is known for is its painstaking attention to detail with each vehicle. The weight of the vehicle, airspeed, gravity, terrain, friction, everything is simulated as realistically as possible, so you can really feel what it would be like to actually be in one of these. Recently, there was a massive new update called Danger Zone that brought to the game the legendary F-14 aircraft, which is the one flown by Tom Cruise and Top Gun, and the visuals and sound effects have been greatly improved as well. Use my link down below to download and start playing War Thunder for free, and all new players, plus those who haven't played in at least six months, will get half a million silver lions, a week of renting some legendary German ground vehicles, three premium vehicles for free to keep forever, XP boosters, and a bunch of other bonuses you'll just have to check out for yourself. So like I said, click my link down below in the description and start playing for free today. Okay, back to the show. So Cheryl's gotten back together with her middle school ex. <laughs> it's like, who, who would ever do that? And now I've been working at the Greendale Public Library for almost seven years. How marvelous. But tell me about you, Cheryl. Are you... unattached? Heather is a witch from Greendale, and Cheryl's got the hots for those witch girls, you know what I'm saying? I mean, which I definitely, you know, do not, I mean, I would, I would never, I mean, shut up, no one asked you. So everyone's thinking about what to do with Pop's diner, because Percival is dead set on knocking it down to build his railroad or whatever, but every time they try to dismantle it, something spooky happens, and long story short, we find out that the diner is haunted. So to fix this, Heather and Cheryl perform a seance, you, you know, it's just a regular day in Riverdale. Why are you still here, spirits? Do you have unfinished business? We are bound to this place. We must bear witness. To what? To the battle that approaches between good and evil. Percival Pickens, the man who is taking over this land, wants to destroy the diner to cripple the resistance and build his stupid train here. Is he building the ghost train? <laughs> the ghost train? Is he building the ghost train? What the hell is the ghost train? Oh, don't act surprised, Cheryl. Come on, have you heard any of the nonsense coming out of your mouth the last six years? Like, this doesn't even crack the top ten. Now, for a variety of reasons, we find out that not only can Jughead hear people's thoughts, but he can also enter their minds and erase their memories now, because he can just do that, by the way. Also, so can Percival. There's no rules here. So, Percival wants to enter Jughead's mind to mess up his powers a bit, but he can't just walk right in, of course. I need something to pry my way in. An object of Mr. Jones. Back in high school, you never saw Jones without his stupid beanie. He buried it in a time capsule. You will deliver the beanie unto me. <laughs> did, did he just say that? <laughs> Bring the beanie unto me. <laughs> this is the greatest show ever made, I'll tell you what. So Reggie digs up the time capsule they made way back when and takes out the beanie and Jughead's jacket. Now, can we just talk about how horribly disgusting this beanie must be? He's just putting it on like it's nothing. You know Jughead never washed this thing once in his life. Anyway, so he opens the door to Jughead's mind palace, which is just like a bunch of comic book boxes. Like, yeah, okay, Jughead. But like, you just know there's gotta be a room in the back somewhere that's like... The heck is Shrek doing a Sailor Moon right now? So after Percival opens Jughead's mind door and leaves it open, now Jughead can hear everyone's thoughts all the time. Why can't I stop farting? Well, I for one think marathoning every episode of Young Sheldon is a great use of my free time. Thank you very much. Ha! Huh. You know, I sure wish Mr. Beast would remind us of how much money he has again. So because it's so overwhelming for him, Jughead goes to hide in the bunker and starts writing a bunch of stories to make the voices stop, which is exactly why I keep making these videos, you know? I gotta just gotta calm the demon inside. But anyway, this is all just prelude to the actual important events of the story. So, Percival is summoning literal, actual, biblical plagues onto Riverdale. And this is just like a small side story, by the way. This isn't even like really that important. We think he may have corrupted the first iteration of Tony's rehearsal dinner. Corruption is another plague, like rivers running blood red and flies and frogs. So Percival is calling plagues down upon us? 
fine, whatever, but how are we supposed to protect ourselves? I'm sorry, can I repeat what you just said back to you? Percival is calling plagues down upon us. Fine, whatever. How is that your reaction to all this? Now, for his final plague, Percival does the whole, like, killing the firstborn child thing. You know, classic move. And that just so happens to include Archie and Jughead. So, Heather calls up her old friend Sabrina Spellman to come and save the day. Sabrina is a fellow witch who specializes in death magic. Mm -hmm. After I passed away a few years ago, my boyfriend Nick Scratch sacrificed himself to bring me back from the dead as a way to rebalance the scales. Ironically, that experience, being resurrected, is what made me decide to specialize in necromancy. Oh, is that all? Oh, yeah, sure, totally, makes perfect sense. So Sabrina teaches Veronica, Betty, and Tabitha how to be witches so they can bring Archie and Jughead back to life, which is a real thing that's really actually happening in the show right now. So I've narrowed it down to these two. They're both super cute. But there is something about this one. You know, Sabrina's a different kind of dude. So first she tries to bring back Jughead and that does not go as planned. Well, I don't really have time to get into the details. Let's just say I'm visiting from the mortal realm. We have some mutual friends and uh... You're not trying to take me back there, are you? Essentially, yes. Everyone misses you. What do you say? I'm good. And so, given what Sabrina just told us earlier, guess what she does with Jughead's body? That sounds that sounds like a weird question, but whatever, just roll with it. Everyone, this is my boyfriend. Nick Scratch. Okay, so let's just summarize everything for a second here. Percival is bringing down biblical plagues, he kills Jughead, Sabrina shows up, and puts her dead boyfriend's soul inside Jughead's body. <laughs> Also, something I found hilarious is how in Archie's heaven, Betty is there, but then in Jughead's heaven, like, he's just by himself reading comic books. Absolute legend, this man! Now, it turns out, bringing them back to life is not quite as easy as they had hoped, but thankfully, there's an oh-so-convenient deus ex machina in that, uh, oh yeah, by the way, Cheryl has the power of the phoenix now, which means, uh, she can bring them back to life anyway. Cleanse each body, renew each soul, till nothing's left but ash and coal. I call upon the phoenix power to help us at this mortal hour. <laughs> oh? Oh? Well, I for one am loving these supernatural season one level special effects. And so everyone's alive again. Sabrina's boyfriend's soul is back in the underworld or wherever it was, and everything is right with the world. You opened up a portal? Yes. One there and one there. Okay, so you think that you're not just a mind reader, but also a portal opener? Yeah, in the same way that you thought you were a time traveler, but you're actually an angel. Oh yeah, by the way, sorry, I skipped this part. Uh, Tabitha is actually a literal for reals angel, and Jughead can open interdimensional portals now. Sorry, I just thought it was so obvious I didn't even need to mention it. Here, uh, read, starting at this yellow sticky. There's a theory that some mind readers aren't really reading minds, but opening portals into people's psychic landscapes and stepping through them. Yeah, so he can open mind portals now because he read it in a book that said he can do that. So Jughead goes to River Vale to talk to his alternate self and find some way of possibly fighting Percival. So Nana, Blossom, her consciousness went into Cheryl's body, which is actually Abigail's immortal body. Y'all, I am so tired. So they go right to the source and meet up with one of the other Jugheads in this universe because turns out there are so many. Hey, can you take a break? Where's your uniform? I'll explain everything. In private. At home. What's this all about? You're kind of freaking me out. Well, be prepared to be even more freaked out. What are you talking about? Hey. Oh my god. Oh my goodness, the Sprouse twins back together again? That's right, everybody, in a crazy plot twist, turns out Riverdale has actually been the Sweet Life 3 the whole time. While this is going on, we also find out some backstory about Percival. So he's actually from the 1500s, and he sold his soul to the devil, literally, to give him magic power so he could get his revenge on the other settlers in early River Vale. Now, when he was going to come back after 400 years and, you know, take over the town or whatever, Hiram's explosion caused him to be sent to Riverdale. And we also find out what's going on with the whole ghost train thing from earlier. Turns out... Percival's long dead relation, Journal Augustus Pickens, is going around the sweet hereafter drafting dead, strapping souls like my dear brother to fight a war against the living here in Riverdale. And Percival's using the ghost train to ship them to Riverdale so he can invade us. 
You know, this seems like a really roundabout way of doing this, but hey, whatever fills up 22 episodes, am I right? And this is when we also learn why everyone suddenly got their magic powers after the explosion. When Riverdale and Rivervale split, it was supposed to be a clean break. Why? There has to be something that's fouled things up. Betty said that she received a phone call. There's a bomb underneath the bed. You need to go now, right now. That's why there are fissures, seepage between universes. That's why we have supernatural powers. And it's why Percival crossed over from Riverfell. So, okay, as Percival's about to unleash his master plan, Archie and the gang decide to negotiate with him. Why they do this exactly, I don't really know, because they're like, oh, we have to negotiate peace with him. Like, no, you don't. Have you not been paying any attention to everything that's happened this season? And the first thing we want is our dead back. In exchange for what? Me. You can do whatever you want to me. Chain me up. Sounds great. Where's this show going? And the final piece of the puzzle you need to know about is that Tony and Fang's baby Anthony is actually the savior of Riverdale and he's immortal and all powerful and something or whatever. And Percival is scared of this baby. So Tabitha, <clears throat> let's see, uh, brings adult Anthony back from the future. Well, did it work? It did. <laughs> Anthony, are you in there, son? Yeah, I'm here. Shut up, Dad, this family stinks. No one understands me. So Jughead opened up a portal to Rivervale, and I went through and started exploring different future scenarios. I just... Like, just how, just, okay, just show this scene to someone with no context and see how long it takes them to have an aneurysm. Okay, so skipping ahead, it's like the final battle between everyone and Percival. There's a big fight outside Pops where Percival gets beat up, but then he ends up stopping everyone by reversing their powers. Except for Jughead, of course, who's just been sitting in the diner the whole time watching this happen. I was thinking, let's play a game. Winner takes the soul of Riverdale. You'll never break into my mind. May the best man win. But wouldn't you know, Jughead had a plan ready the whole time. You see, it's actually really simple, okay? So while Percival was fighting the Riverdale kids, Jughead opened a portal into the River Vale Pops Diner where all the alternate reality versions of all the characters in the show were waiting to attack while Percival was stuck inside Jughead's mind palace. I mean, come on, how did you not see this coming a mile away? And so with his body weakened, Tabitha takes Percival to 1580 before he became immortal and gives him back to the devil to claim his soul for eternity. If I can't have Riverdale, then no one will. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Cypher, get him the hell out of here. You know, I believe I will. <sighs> and then Cheryl just kind of brings everyone back to life and everything's wonderful, no problems happen ever again. Bailey's Comet is going to crash into Riverdale in less than 24 hours, and it is going to be an extinction-level event. <sighs> I just... Like, can you guys just, like... I mean, come on, really? So basically, no one can leave Riverdale, they can't stop the comet, no one outside of Riverdale even knows about the comet, everything's just looking real great right about now. Shouldn't, like, the government try to shoot the comet out of the sky or something? Like, why isn't this all over the internet? It's a facet of the spell. Percival doesn't want anyone to help us, so as far as the world is concerned, Bailey's Comet is passing over Riverdale tonight, as it has every 65 years. Great, so that's it then. We're all gonna die. I'm so happy I moved here sophomore year. But ultimately what happens is Veronica somehow uses her like poison filter powers or whatever to absorb everyone else's powers, which I guess she can just do now, by the way. And then she gives them all to Cheryl so that her Phoenix fire power can melt the comet. Did it work? Only one way to find out. You're threatening me, Veronica, and I can see an aura around you. And I can't. Veronica's nuts. What if that hadn't worked? I should have stayed in Chicago. I can hear your thoughts. Which is not nearly as cool as my idea like three years ago of using Archie's abs, but yeah, okay, whatever you say. But yeah, so now everyone else doesn't have any of their powers anymore. See, I told you they were gonna lose him at the end of the season, I called it! And Cheryl's like some kind of magical Riverdale Voltron now, and uses her powers to stop the comet with like the weirdest sound effect. <laughs> And so there you have it, kids. Turns out the real magic was the power of gay. But anyway, so now this entire season, I've been thinking to myself, like, like where could they take it from here? You know, I mean, season six has magic powers, literal angels, the devil himself, interdimensional travel. Like, come on, what could season seven possibly have? Somehow the year is 1955. I suspect that the milkshake-like combination of all of our gifts, arcane magic, time traveling, opening portals into other dimensions did something 
wholly unexpected, as somehow Archie Andrews and all of his friends, me included, are teenagers again. And I'm the only one who remembers what our lives were like. Oh, they're, they're teenagers again? We're doing this again? The whole cast is like in their 30s now. Well, you know, to be honest, in like a weird kind of way, I'm actually kind of on board with this choice. 